So today we're going to talk about Wingstop and I have to warn you there there isn't a lot of good things to talk about so yeah Hi and welcome to my channel Maisel Today we are going to be reviewing the first season of Netflix's live adaptation of Wings Club Yeah, I did a review before about the teasers and I didn't even know that they were going to drop the season I just saw it uh, a few a few days ago, you know, they had dropped the season and I was like, wow, they, they really did, they didn't they? So yeah, you know, it, it took me a lot of strength but I had to watch it I couldn't finish it actually because while I was halfway there, my Netflix stopped working Maybe the owner of Netflix, you know, decided to throw me out <laughs> So yeah, I just stopped there, but you know, I said to this review either way, I actually wrote a list of things that <laughs> Things that I knew I had to talk about the live adaptation season one Honestly, there isn't a lot of things that I did right like at all But there were so many things that annoyed me First things first, there is nothing Similar with the actual Wings Club that we all know and love So you know, if you're watching it because you want to see how Monty, you know, adapted the uh, the actual Wings Club that you know from childhood, there, there, there isn't it there at all. It's, it's a slightly different show, but only using the name Wings Club. I really think that Netflix tends to use the name Wings for clout. And, you know, watching the teasers and watching the series, they had British accents. And I didn't exactly understand why. Like, that wasn't a problem for me though, but, you know, <laughs> while I was watching my sister, I understood that they needed a castle. You know, somewhere to film near the castle and there are a lot of castles in Europe so that is why they have British accents because the cast were British because they filmed it somewhere in Europe I'm just going to, you know, go to my list and talk about so many things that they did wrong I really can't think of right things, I'm sorry One thing about the show though, like I said before, it's on its own it's, It looks like a typical Netflix series that you could watch It looks like an okay show but you just shouldn't have really said it to you so. That's, that's my cup of tea Okay, so watching the first episode, the first season There are so many things that I had to write down The first one was Apparently, Althea is in Soleria That is where um, Stella is from Originally, Althea is supposed to be in Magix But now it's in Soleria And Althea and Red Fountain are like the same school There is the specialist hall and the fairies hall It's like Netflix said we don't have a lot of budget you know, to get another castle or something So we're just going to put Red Fountain and Althea as the same thing and they call the whole place Althea and then there's a fairy hall and specialist hall I was like, seriously and it's Faraganda it doesn't exactly go with Faraganda she goes with a D something, do something, I don't know it's only some dude that calls her Farah but she doesn't really go with Faraganda so you know they've changed her name too and the fairies and specialists are like mixed you know how originally you know specialists were like you know guys and stuff like that but now they've decided to mix it girls are specialists too you know fighting with swords which is this is the only thing they do all day because they never actually show these specialists doing anything like in class or anything they are just always on the field fighting with swords and that's the only part of power they have they don't have like you know magic powers because some specialists were wizards they could do you know stuff but these ones they only just fight with swords and sticks that's literally it for them and yeah they also milk fairies too the whole gender um, neutral thing i'm fine with it but you know that was the change they made from the original one i never exactly noticed stella before but watching this thing stella actually <laughs> doesn't look like a student to me when i've been seeing the teaser i actually thought she was a teacher it was as i was watching this season the first episode i realized that stella is actually a student She's actually a student, but she looks way older than a student, which is just, I don't know, it does very well to me. Yeah, um, names Flora. At the point in the show, she um, names Flora that her cousin is Flora. So, they are saying they didn't exactly get rid of Flora, but they threw her out of Wings Club and replaced her with Terra. <laughs> one, one main thing I saw in this series that got me really pissed off was the fact that it seems like everyone has an attitude, literally, like, Everybody is pissed off or has some attitude about this or that and everyone is just unnecessarily rude Like people are not like that in real life. Literally everyone is just a ticking time bomb, you know And the thing about the way people behave in this show is that you can't exactly tell, you know, how they rule Because today someone is rude, tomorrow they are nice and then today the nice people are, are acting rude and just saying unnecessary rude things to someone That that was something that just got me very confused in the whole season because I didn't understand like what was going on at all, like the emotions were just running rampant I mean, I suppose to be teenagers, but that was just doing too much I really don't understand why Hollywood and Netflix's view of teenagers is always so extra Like, whenever they want to portray teenagers, you know, they're always showing them doing stuff like, you know, drinking, smoking, partying, having sex Like, that that's 
just too much. If you actually come to reality, teenagers don't, you know, they might do that, but they they overdo it in in Netflix and in Hollywood shows. And I haven't, you know, been to Western schools. I mean, like you know, in America or in Europe. But I have a feeling that they don't exactly act like that. I mean, back then they they romanticized you know, American high schools, you know, with the whole movies like High School Musical and so many other high school movies, we actually thought that growing up, I actually thought that their high schools were actually very cool, I always wanted to go to those schools but you know, <laughs> that is not the reality and now they are terrorizing American high schools, making it look like it's some sort of place where students just do whatever without fear or whatever another thing that I noticed was that Bloom's parents are unaware that it's a fairy Alright, so I forgot to add that apparently Bloom's a changing, which means that when her parents gave birth to her, because her mom actually did give birth to her, she was changed with her mom's actual child, which was actually dead. So her parents do not know that she's not their child, but she knows that she's not their child. So yeah, freak. The original beings, her parents are aware that she's a fairy. I mean, they actually even saw some things happen to them, you know. They are aware that she's a fairy and they actually follow her to school, but they couldn't, you know, pass the barrier because they are not magical folk. But yeah, this one, they are on, on her way, she's a fairy. They think she's somewhere in Switzerland, schooling and stuff like that, but she isn't. So, she's lying to her parents. And Bloom has anger issues in this one also. The reason she actually came to our fear, according to Netflix's adaptation, is the proprietor of Faraganda um, had told her that she could help her control her powers. That's why she came to our fear. She has like anger issues, so every you know, little thing, she, she burns down in flames and kills someone. She literally burnt her house down and gave her mom third degree bonds. I was like, seriously? She burnt her and gave her third degree bonds. I was like, okay, that, that just too dark and too, too serious for Wings Club. But yeah, that's, that's what she did. Apparently, the, the fairies evolved and lost their powers to transform. That's why they did not have wings. I don't exactly know how that is evolving, if it's not like, you know, going down. But yeah, apparently that's why they don't have wings. I haven't finished watching the series yet, I probably would someday but I did see a clip on YouTube, spoiler alert, that Bloom got wings, a, a transformation clip probably the only one that will get it because you know they have to, a very a very low budget so yeah she she transformed and she got some kind of fiery wings I mean they didn't exactly look very cool, personally they didn't look cool to me they were just there, they were okay you know Bloom never exactly had fiery wings originally, so I didn't, I wasn't expecting that, and I didn't exactly like it. And while she was fighting, it just looked very whack. But while she had the wings and she was fighting in the clip I saw on YouTube, it looked like, you know when there's a fire and you're like, you're blowing it and Riz is blowing the fire, that's what it looks like. So yeah, the, the CJ on that part was really lame for me. Anyways, going on, something that I didn't really like was the fact that they created an enmity between Stella and Bloom. Now, originally, Stella and Bloom were literally best friends. They, they could literally die for each other. Stella was the reason that Bloom actually went to Afia in the first place. But this one, they're creating such a, an issue between Stella and Bloom. And now they made it like uh, Stella is with Sky. So she she tries to, you know, get rid of Bloom. She even once almost got Bloom killed because she didn't like how close she was to Sky. So that whole thing was, that whole thing is just bad, you know, having Stella and Bloom fight. Um, not be friends, you know, and the fact that they are liking the same guy was just really weird. Yeah, another thing <laughs> to summarize the whole of this series, actually, to me, would be just imagine the low budget Avatar live action plus Shadow Hunters plus Sabrina. That is literally what this is. Method to to just push them into elementals. They literally said, you know, they are elementals right now, so they are like Avatar. They are, they are benders at this point. Bloom is a fire bender, and you know, the other one is a an earth bender and water bender and it, literally that that's what they are and it gives me this um shadow hunters vibe because of the whole uh, alfia and um, red fountain mix and you know the whole sword stuff it looks very lame there's hardly any magic going on so it really gives me shadow hunters vibe bloom at this point is just clear a fair child with her red hair it also gives me sabrina vibes because they can be very gory sometimes, you know, the way they are showing the monsters and everything. Back in the original wings, they didn't exactly show like blood or guts or something. But here they don't care and you know they've been showing that and everything is literally too dark. And I mean literally, like you can hardly actually see the background behind the, the cast and everything when they're talking because it's just so dark. I understand they went to Europe to film this, which means you know there's hardly going to be any sun. But well, everything is just too dark and I don't like it. Wings was a very bright uh, show, but this one is just way too dark. Yeah, let's talk about boys. 
So they decided to skip Timmy and Brandon because originally there was you know only Timmy and Brandon. There was no Hilia and um, Nabu in the first season, but there was Timmy, Brandon, Sky, and Rich. But they decided to cut Timmy and Brandon, you know, probably because they were there to cut their budget too. We were left with Riven and Sky. But the thing about Riven is that he's just too much. I mean, we knew that Riven was that bad boy you know but the only thing about him then was that he was very competitive you know with the other members especially this guy and he had this little evil speck in him but you know when he really needed to help them he did and he helped them you know fight against him so he was a good guy but yeah Riffin is literally just this, this typical bad boy dude that just smoking and literally smoking and drinking and you know just playing around uh, it's just too much for me another thing that Netflix got terribly wrong is they decided to get rid of Cloud Tower which means there is no um, tricks so the, the main evil in this first season is not even the tricks it's some dark creatures or whatever but yeah there's no Cloud Tower there's no tricks they got rid of I see Jassy and Stormy but then there's this new girl who, <laughs> who they call Bella Tricks she has Stormy's power I guess that was what they said to do us with the tricks and in with Bella Tricks and she actually goes to school with them at this point the wings or Alfia or the fairy people in wings club in netflix's wings club they actually are like witches they're more like witches than fairies because you know they don't have wings they don't exactly do a lot of magic and the whole place is just so dark so i just feel like at this point there's no difference between them and you know how the witches would would do in wings club you know what they did for visa just made me laugh because they literally made Misa Professor Xavier. <laughs> yeah, she she isn't exactly a music person, although she's always with her headphones for some reason, you know, she's always with her headphones, but she's literally Professor Xavier, you know. She can't exactly read their minds, but she's reading their emotions and this and that. That's literally her power. So it's, it's very, you know, boring. There's not much she can actually do. She just feels stuff and that's it, which is very, very lame to me. But yeah, but a very lame version of Professor Xavier because she can't really do it. <laughs> Among all the characters, I'll say my favorite character would be Aisha because she's only the normal person. The other person is just too much, too extra. They're either too bad or too good. Like the girl Terra, they did such a, a stereotypical thing, you know. That plus size girl that is overly nice and she's kind of insecure about her body, like no one likes and you know, people bully her. It's like that's such a stereotypical thing to do. Why can't they make her a confident girl that's confident in her body? I mean, she did once strangle Riven, which is another thing because they make everyone look like at some point they they are a twig that is snapping and they can kill each other at some point. And I chose Aisha to be my favorite character because among all the characters, she just seemed like the normal, sensible, okay one. You know, she's she's only had one kind of part. She's only had one emotion throughout. The other characters, like today they are good, tomorrow they are bad. You know, you don't exactly know what side they are on. It's, it's changing, but Aisha has been, you know, straight up to me. Yeah. I think she's probably my favorite character in this um, series. Yeah, uh, I believe that <laughs> that's it for analyzing it. I Like I said, I haven't finished watching it, but I feel like I can actually tell how it's going from here. There's another thing I actually don't like, the fact that they, there's no detail into a lot of things. Things that are very scattered. They, they didn't go into details about stuff like apart from the fact that they called, you know, um Stella a we know that Stella is a princess of Solaria. Every other thing is so scattered. Is Aisha a princess? Where is she from Earth? You know, they act very humanly. I mean they're not aliens, right? But it's almost like they're an earth. That's what it feels like. Like they're an earth. So it's it's very weird. It's a very weird feeling. Like I said in the beginning, there is literally nothing, and I mean nothing, that is similar to the actual Wings Club. So if you are watching this to have a feel of what you know Wings Club felt like, or to you know to see how much they did is now, nah. just just imagine that it's a different show. I just forget about the name Wings Club because there is nothing similar. So yeah, if I'm going to rate this um series in how close it was to the actual Wings Club, it's going to be a zero, zero by hundred. A series on its own, I'll give it a 50 by 50 because it's a typical, it's a literally typical Netflix series at this point. There's nothing, you know, that about it. That would be it for my evaluation for Netflix's season one of um, Fate the Wings Saga. Yeah, so uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like. Bye!